Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Coming to you live from Elizabeth, Indiana, out of the AccuStats Arena here at Caesars Southern Classic, excuse me, Southern Indiana, it is the Derby City Classic. A one-pocket division has rounded up last night, and now here we are today bringing you Nine Ball, two of the world's greatest players right here out of the AccuStats Arena. Without further ado, introducing our first player, to my left, coming to us from Moscow, Russia, sponsored by Q-Tech, it's Fedor Gorst. And his opponent to my right, coming to us right from South Dakota here in the USA, also sponsored by Q-Tech, it's the South Dakota kid, Shane Van Boning. All right, players, you may approach the table lag. At this time, I'm gonna send it up to the booth to Mr. Jeremy Jones and his sidekick, Take it away, gentlemen. Elite Class 9 ball coming to you all day, and it cannot get any better than this one. Hello and welcome, pool fans. Mark Wilson and Jeremy Jones on the call. Well, this is going to be a close lag. Looks like Gorst has won it from my vantage point, but we will see. Well, apparently Shane Van Boning has won the lag. This is a race to nine. No jump cues. They're using the three-point rule on the break. In case you don't know what the three-point rule is, that means three balls must cross the head string. For each ball that you pocket on the break, one less ball must cross the head string to comply. If you fail to comply, your opponent may have the shot as is, or he may pass it back, and you must play without benefit of a push out. Van Boning set to break eight ball on the wing. Van Boning regarded as the most powerful breaker in the sport. Very accurate. Cut break. Oh, let's see, three, six, he made the ball, made the wing ball, I guess. Picked up a shot on the one. Maybe the racking template might have helped him in that particular instance, keeping the one off the nine so he has direct access to the one ball. Little bit of a delicate position play here. Wants to get the speed right. It's easy to come too far, and this is the opening shot of the match. Boy, good speed control. After virtually nine days of constant play, these guys are starting to really get dialed in. That requires very accurate pocketing. You can't just hit the pocket, but you have to hit a, the exact place on the pocket that you're planning on in order to gauge the speed so precisely. Two cushion position, gonna play the set three ball on the side. Got a choice here to make. You can try to thread around it. Rather not bump into the seven if he didn't have to, just because there's probably two feet of distance in there, and if you don't land on it just right, it can get awkward. If he has to, he can, but looks like he's gonna go withdraw. Well, he was able to kill it. Yeah, he got a little straight here, Mark. May have to draw underneath the seven. I don't know if he can stun out or not. Gotta cheat the pocket a little bit, it looks like. Oh, he could stun it, okay. Gorst has won <laughs> the first two events that we had. Finished second in the 10 ball, won the bank pool, won the one pocket. Now in the running for the nine ball. And then you have America's greatest, Shane Van Boning. Couldn't find a better matchup to watch. Yeah, and overall, you know, 
you could say it's been a quiet tournament for a few players because of what Fetter's done. He's kind of taken the taken the glory here and deservedly so. And you would never know it from the young man, but I know Shane, even though he hasn't really put his earmark on the 2022 Derby, he's looking to do it here in the nine ball. He's won the lag and crafted the break and run out from that opening break. Had to make a couple delicate position plays and good decisions. One zero is our score. Every round is just going to be feature matchups the rest oh, of the day. Absolutely, I mean, my yeah. goodness, we're getting down to where there's probably only 30 players left. Yeah, I think this is round eight. If I'm not mistaken. Probably just a handful of undefeated players. I think Shane has had one loss, if I remember correctly. I don't believe Fetter's suffered a loss yet. Almost the entire week. Hasn't suffered a loss. Yeah. <laughs> the filler beat him in the finals, but it really, uh, of the 10 ball, but really it was uh, maybe Fedor played better. So Now Shane usually goes with a, a pretty firm cut. Doesn't back off the cut too much here since he can break a little more from the side rail. A lot of times when we play the three-point rule, there's a box involved. So the guys will go with the cut break, a little more cut here. It's going to be a heavy cut, not too, too much. A lot of speed, nothing down it seems. And the one ball dressing up for the guy of the week so far. You know, I don't want to be anti-climatic, and I certainly don't know what I'm talking about when I make this statement. But this eighth round, May have secured the all around already. I haven't really looked into that, but. To me, if you won the first two events, I mean. Well, how would, you know. you, how would someone supersede that? They'd well, have to have finished high in the other two events and then go on to win this one. Probably. Right, without that great of a finish from Fetter, you know, but here I think he's, like I said, a, I would guess with two wins and always the winning is, you know, they're comparable, but it just gives you that extra amount of points that makes it hard to overcome, especially a lot of times we're looking at a guy with one win really, really mm -hmm. has a hold on it, right? So right. I would bet mathematically, and I'm sure there's many that have already checked, but I would bet mathematically uh, this guy might already have that all-around banner being start to hung up, uh, being hanged up here in the arena. Funny little shot. I would screw this between the 7-5 myself, you know. Better, like right there, right? To me, he seems even better when his paws in the back is either not there or super light, just like the last shot. Mm-hmm. As opposed to prolonged. Yeah. Yeah, when I see him uh, with a little much more mild paws in the back, it seems like to me, he rarely misses anyways, but it seems like to me it's even better. I think his speed control is better yeah. when he does that. Yeah, it seems like it. It just – he's got such a great backswing anyways, I would – key on that i think when you add a big pause you take away from how good your backswing is setting you up sometimes we'll see here some this type of shot sometimes he holds it a hair longer yeah like that well actually you can get away with anything if you'll play 10 hours a day with focus that's that's the illusion <laughs> right? that's the illusion with the talent and great mind and such discipline there's a lot of things that, that you're going to craft into perfection almost if you keep doing it like, like Mark said so often and so disciplined. That's just like the barrier of teaching, right? Mm -hmm. The barrier of teaching is convincing someone that, hey, yeah, you've done this for a long time. That's why you do it pretty well. But we can get you a lot better doing it in a better form, you know. Right. Without taking away the person's, you know, little personality in the swing, so. 
course, neutralizes the break and run out by Van Boney by running out himself from a dry break. 1-1 one, one is our score. We're off to a blistering pace here as both players are playing 1,000 after a rack apiece. Yeah, Gorst is really the, uh, the talk of the entire event here. Finished second in the big t uh, Bigfoot and then first in one pocket in Banks. A lot of people would love it if he somehow won the nine ball here. Well. He's the first player ever. Yeah, I mean, there's a handful of guys that you could say are the favorites. But out of that handful, I place him as the favorite. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, he's, ro he's playing. Yeah. yeah, he's rolling. I mean, this is no coincidence. You know, 2022, he's, I think he started off with a win in Arizona at the uh, – uh-oh – uh-oh, at the CSI event there. Um, a second-place finish, I believe, in the other event he played here in the States. So, And then started off this week, like Mark said, with a second in the Bigfoot, and, and it snaps off the other two. Mm, could he use a little more angle there on the first shot just to make things a little more accurate instead of drawing, you know. Can he stun here still? I'd love to stun one rail. He's just going to draw in the position. That's fine. The other day, Shane was fishing, ice fishing, and holding up these great big fish. And <laughs> Typed in. Most of his opponents know how that fish feels. <laughs> <laughs> Some larger than others. He loves ice fishing. Good Lord. I couldn't yeah. think of anything worse. I went up there and went fishing with him in early October, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's much chance of me going back up there during the winter to fish. Tell you what, it's some kind of beautiful up there, though. Mm hmm. Really nice every morning. Go outside and have some coffee. There'll be wild turkeys and deer right there. and Really just a beautiful place. And then two to one. SVB takes advantage of the ball in hand there. We'll be going late tonight, you know. We don't want to put it on you too much with all the fans, but the players are playing at a great pace. We just got a ton of players in the tournament, even though we've dwindled it down. But, you know, when you get towards the end of the tournament, most players take a hair extra time. Yeah. They make sure they use their timeout. Their, they utilize their timeout. So matches, I wouldn't ever say drag on with this kind of field, but they do lengthen a little bit. And the quality of play is such they're going to be close. Mm -hmm. Right? That's they're right. not going to be blowouts so much. That's right. And the one thing that the break, you know, even though the rule is a little bit shady, but, you know, not something that everyone loves, and I understand it. But it does make it to where the break isn't going to be at a winter break format where we don't see both opponents play that much, you know. So it's the one big char good characteristic of it without going to an alternate break format. Now the four is tight going by the seven, but I yeah. think it does have a pocket. You can see, and the good thing is the three's in a great spot to be able to get nice and close to the four. Whether he plays from behind it or I think he's probably comes out two rails, or, or excuse me, one rail here and then two rails on the next. As he, if he comes out to the center, then that's outside placement. If he stays on the inside, inside placement, this is going to be outside. Yeah. And he's gotten heavy enough. He's just got to use his skills here to come out one rail. One rail or three rails? Yeah, three because rails. Three is wells, you're kind of coming at it, but it maybe yeah, too full. Yeah, but you'd be, be yeah. a long ways from it maybe, you know? Yeah, and you want to be close to the four here. Yeah, I think so. With that seven kind of uh, aggravating your periphery. 
That's the shot I thought he had originally played, but I thought he got too heavy at first. That's why I said commented two rails earlier off the three, but actually I think he did real well. And anytime you got to go to the left side of the pocket, you'd rather be on the left side of the ball. If you go on the right side of the ball, if the make isn't it. It's just that the friction you create makes the ball want to bobble a little bit more. Whereas when you're cutting behind it, you're actually putting a hair of right English on that object ball, right? And it mm -hmm. wants to accept when it hits that left point a little bit more. And for me, I get a better feeling of, of shooting to that portion of a pocket whenever I'm on that good side of it. You know, straight in's the premium, right? That's mm -hmm. where you want to be on a portion of a pocket. But. And the thing is, to me, whenever I help people about shooting at a portion of the pocket, we're not good enough to just dissect the object ball and say, oh, yeah, that's the point for the point of the pocket. You just you go through your process, and then you really just have to trust what you're looking at when you get down on the ball. You have to trust the aim. And now Shane looking pretty good here. This, this table has shown us some big swings in matches, right, Mark? Where it oh, looked yeah. like one player was going to go on with it, and one little mistake or bad roll and turn things around. Another person right out, Van Boning. And that's America's finest player right there, Shane Van Boning. You know, one of the greatest of all time, and, you know, one of the top five probably four or five Americans at least at nine ball or rotation games, that's for sure. Many consider him the greatest of all time in rotation. Right? Tons of titles, but not in the Hall of Fame just because he's only 38 years old. He has to be 40. Yeah, that's already slated for 2024 or whatever the date is. Yeah, he certainly established new standards for American pool. South Dakota kid. Three ball on the wing this time. Oh, the corner ball got a kiss. Got Watch nine. that nine ball cross nine the Nine ball side. got plenty yeah. hot. Dry break. Very untypical of Shane Van Boning having a couple dry breaks. I think he got a little, it seemed like to me the corner ball didn't have as much pace, like maybe he cut it a little more than than he had been. You heard a lot of like collisions, right? Kick, 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 like a lot of little mm -hmm. kisses in there. And seems like when they play the heavier cut, it's more like like a regular break kind of kind of feeling. Now this tough situation, the three six. The three's bankable. The three six is a good combo. Not a tough combo, even though it's some space and some distance from the hole, but the seven getting good on it. The seven's really making that tough. Right. Right. Yeah. Getting good is yeah. uh whole nother deal than just the difficulty of the combination. And if you're not good on it, then it plays terribly. <laughs> it's just too hard. Yeah, and the bank shot on the three isn't bad, but really hard to carry position to the four you know especially with the six there if you get a little behind the three you could swing the cue ball off the three a couple rails to get on the four but difficult I was looking at the bank right now yeah but when the ball's close to the rail mark right mm -hmm. that's when it unless you're drawing off of it that's when it's really hard to move the cue ball well he's wanting to get thin on the three yeah you can see that he's playing in the Boy, this is a bank shot that's a full diamond away down table from the pocket. You seldom see guys play position for a bank shot that's a full diamond away. Well, I would have loved to seen a little more angle. Now he's got to kind of shove the ball two rails, and he would love to get the cue ball somewhere about where it's at now. I don't know if he can really get that far. We'll see. Yeah, I, I think it should be a lighter hit than that, Jeremy. I think he'll be a full diamond away from where he's at now. Yeah, but with a high ball, it looks like it won't get there to me. Well, it might like not. A, That's like what I'm a center-ish kind of. Because you don't want to clip that six coming around now. You'll go towards that corner pocket down there with the cue ball. Plus, it's uh, un uncomfortable to play from where the six ball puts the cue ball rather than where you do, even though it might be tough, just equally as tough. 
Oh, he, he was got, able to. Yeah, he got a lot out of it. too much almost. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay, great shot, too. Boy, that thing went in there like a bullet. Yeah, he had to center stun it, kind of like cut it a little bit, make it hook just a hair. If you ever want to learn how those guys hook the ball on a bank, right, when it's out, you know, on the felt, not off the rail, it's with stun. Really the main and only way to, I wouldn't say only way, but the main way to make the ball hook. You know how the players used to shoot them cross corners and mm -hmm. kind of make it bend around the ball on the spot? Yeah. Took me a long time to realize that stun that does that. This is perfect cue ball here. Just really nice. Now he'll make a decision if he wants to play the seven in the side or in the corner. Both are available. Clearly he wanted to go for the corner based on where he put the cue ball there. Yeah, I would use the bridge on this. You don't have to do much with it. You just want to draw back just a little bit. Get the cue ball away from the cushion just a hair. Yeah, and this is where you look forward at the nine being over the pocket, right? Mm -hmm. You can handle straight in on the eight on the rail, you know what I mean? So no reason mm -hmm. to get any kind of missable on the seven at all. You know, if the nine's down on the back rail below the spot, now you have to pay a, t a little attention, a little more attention, let's yeah. say that, to what you're doing right here on this seven. But with the nine, like I said, very easy. That's why you should not panic in these spots. He played the six very conservatively just to assure himself of the cue ball drifting outward. And uh, I really like that. And kind of like what you were talking about, work a little harder. Don't be lazy. You know, take the longer shot. Don't try to get close and get perfect and risk that. Now everything plays great once he pocketed the seven. Anybody watching this would get out from here. Yeah, very crafty run out there by Gorst. 3 2 is our score. Gorst is tra trailing but breaking. Had a real intense battle in this last one. Filler rallied from seven to three behind to win. Put on a classic performance. The audience hadn't quite down, uh, dialed down, and then they said it's going to be Gorst and Van Boning. <laughs> Had just enough time to grab another cup of coffee and get back in here. Yeah, we got time for lunch later. <laughs> yeah. That's what they said. Yeah. They can't pass this up. America's best against the hottest player on the planet. Now, of course, he got a terrible kiss on the cue ball in his last break. Right by the side, and it got kissed in the corner. Very heavy cut there. Same kiss he got right there by that side, but at least he didn't get lost in the corner and fed her. Can't wait to shoot this long, tough two ball. Really mm -hmm. nice uh, little little tip position here to hold the ball. Doesn't have to kill it. That's where his length, man, really. It's shots like this, I think we saw it in the one pocket where he had to elevate, shoot some shots down table, and really hold the ball. But be able, he's able to shoot that calm, relaxed stroke so well doing it. And I think that's where the length advantage really comes in, Mark. You get that extra bit of length involved, you know, just mathematically, you just get a little more effortless power. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Power comes from tip speed, and length produces tip speed. Yeah, and so, like a shot like this, he can amp up if needed be, but just watch how simple the stroke is. There's nothing to it, right? So yeah. smooth. Yeah, so rehearsed. And that's what opens that pocket up. You saw the two. It didn't hit perfect, but it didn't even think about. You right. know, bobbling, right? Right. Okay, probably, you know, doesn't come back too much because he wants to guarantee the angle. He could draw back into what looks like better position if he gets there, but it's mm -hmm. more about what wants to happen versus what I want it to do. Right. I always describe it like this. There's perfect position and there's proper position. Yeah. And it's two different things. Perfect position is too close, meaning that you can, if you don't have any room for air, 
This is proper position. Preserve the angle so that you can easily traverse down to the five ball. Yeah, and once you start working, that's where you really, in my opinion, start to improve the most. Uh, when you start working through the rack, accepting things, things start to make sense to you a lot more. That word I use a lot, resolve. You get a lot of resolve, it seems like, when you start to work through racks versus kind of force your way through them. Yeah. All right, this is the type of shot, for some reason, if he digs on the cue ball. Okay, I like him going the high ball here. Because when he digs on it, you can lose it two rails in the corner. You could get straight on the five. I think percentages say a high ball is better. I think straight on the five is a real possibility if you know if you miss hit it slightly. Mm -hmm. But even that, you can still defend yourself. Just get the four ball down at all costs. Now there, he was able to introduce even the perfect approach line, and then it was just speed control, and he's hitting the pocket so pure. His speed is just impeccable. Well, speed's always going to be good because, like we said a second ago, it's more about what the ball wants to do, and that was as much the natural path of the cue ball as it's going to be off that four. And so speed's always going to be at your best when you're taking the natural path off the ball. Now, these guys are playing so good that you cannot become complacent. You still have to play proper angles here, and we saw a little bit with Filler last time where maybe he was just a, he's a little haphazard on some of his push-outs or something like that. So. Yeah. Uh, Fedor is seldom uh, allows himself to be a lack of discipline and stays right to his game. But he's probably the, the player that it ex examples that the most is staying right. Every shot, no matter what, the whole structure, the whole form, yeah, remains still after you impact the cue ball. Well, and that's easy for him because that's what he does in practice. He relies, yeah. you know. Right. And that's why under pressure he relies on those reps that he has in the gym or the pool room or whatever you want to call it when he's training. Yep. Vince Lombardi says winning isn't the sometimes thing, it's all the time thing. Do it right every time. Don't cut a corner, whether it's in practice or in competition. And now three apiece. Right from run out there by Gorst. Never was in trouble throughout the entire rack. Right? Just no, smooth. For sure. yeah. yeah. Superbly played. Yeah, and the, I really think the heavier cut we're seeing from these guys is the ticket, it seems like. Seems like they can push that corner ball in with a little spin. They get nice action always, not always. I mean, you're going to get some kisses where the, the rack, you don't comply, right, with the rule. But it seems like percentages are on their favor to comply. And it seems like they can make two or three at times with this break, not just trying to maybe make one. Seven balls on the wing. One ball went down. It's not yeah. going to be a complying break. No, as soon as I, wow. I talked about it. And there it is. <laughs> and he hit it hard, you know, and there was a lot of, but yeah. it just kind of died down there on the end. Yeah, it was weird. Just one ball came off the rack up table, really. Normally you get at least something racing that direction, whether they get kissed or not. He's going to have to shoot the three up long. He's speculating the run out because there is a 3-9 combo that's not hard. But the balls are so open, you hate to play a combo. No, absolutely. Yeah. With them all here grouped together, you can get on the five in the side with no problems. So he's going to have to take this in the side unless he really wants to work the cue ball. And the reason being is he doesn't want to fall a little underneath the four. I wouldn't. If he plays it in the side, this gives him a nice angle. Oh, he could hold. Never mind. This is the same angle I was talking about. So the camera really fooled me there. So he could go two. I'd probably just go one rail beyond the nine. I don't see the point in the second rail. Nice decision Does there. Does six go, though? By the well, seven? if it doesn't, he, he can still do what he wants. He can just even back it up. He can go forward. Okay. I but thought I, he had a little away angle I, from it. I, I, I'm certain that he knows it goes. Okay. Well, he I'm looked at both the that. five and yeah. six earlier. Right. From our vantage point, you can't tell for sure, but I know that he knows. 
Yeah, and he must have a pretty full pocket to shoot it that way, not roll it, trying to get straight. See, and the deal there is not too, too much right, maybe a quarter tip, half tip. That way you can be aggressive with that stroke right there, and it's not going to take off on you, right? Mm-hmm. You use a little more right there. Sometimes you can be tentative, worrying about it really taking off, and you get along and a little bit awkward on the eight. Oh, these guys are playing great. It's really just mm -hmm. the break shot that slowed both of these guys down at times. The Van Boning takes advantage of the non-complying break, runs out. And really, you know, uh, Fetter made a nice break. Nothing complied, but he did make a ball. He did have a shot. It's kind of that's the, that point where I really don't care about that rule. Yeah, there's a lot of little things about it. Um, you know, guys tried to make a rule to guard against the, the break becoming a, a, a routine shot. Um, a, you know, it was, it was designed to be fairly random. Um, just like racking the balls in a particular spot, if you keep racking them in a particular spot with the two in the back or two and three on the corners, you guys are going to figure out how to take advantage of that. So, in my mind, the best way to keep the integrity in the game and more of what the guys that, that invented this or ladies that invented this great game, uh, I think you just got to tighten the pockets overall. Well, in my mind, simplicity is your friend, so scratch all the addendums and let's play nine ball. And if you can make it up with a softer break or whatever, fine. Because otherwise, we, why don't we play 15 ball rotation and get rid of all that? And then there's no arguing over the rack, and it's a real skillful game. The break doesn't mean so much. But if we're going to keep it fast and loose, then let's just play nine ball. Yeah, Shane may have to take on a bank here. I don't know if he can, without taking on a missable two ball to the lower right corner by the nine in between right. the six nine and going three rails, um, he may have to just draw draw into the six, maybe uh, produce some type of bank shot on the three. And the problem with the soft like routine break to, is just that there's players that can beat you without really playing the game much. Um, I think that's a bit of it. But, I mean, who do we know that's like that? I, I don't well, see it happening very often. Well, I don't know about that. I think there's – I think I think if both players get involved in the match, you know, you could take a let's, – let's, let's figure out some players that, that certainly if they got shots on the one that were very easy, they could just run out a lot. But there's also power breakers that can exploit it the same amount, you know, where they run out. So yeah. uh, I don't know that it solves a whole lot is my point. Yeah, that's why I say just tighten the pocket is the only thing that I can. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, really come fair up enough. with, which I think we've seen. And I think we've seen that a lot of the fans, including a lot of the players, really like it. Boy, Shane made a great uh, bank there, but then the cue ball wouldn't comply. <laughs> so Yeah, he just got a little any. bit flat. Got a little topspin on there, arced into the end rail, took a lot of the pace and momentum out of the mass. Now Shane's facing a super cut, tough, thin cut on the five. If he doesn't have anything else, he'll go for this. And there isn't much there. I think he's shooting four rails for shape around the nine. Yeah, he's overcut it. He's overcut it. And that's the right place to miss. That's the pro side to miss on there. He's He's disappointed that he's left a thin cut on the five. <laughs> he showed some displeasure there, but that's not usually him. He is disappointed, though. He worked through the rack and made that great bank shot, but just couldn't even get a hint of position.
you know, in the history of the total performance average, there's only been two players play a thousand for a set. But we're starting to inch up there where this is going to start happening. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is going to come around. Used to be, though, if you just scored in the upper 800s, you're darn good. Nowadays, we're seeing a lot of matches in the mid-900s. Guys getting deep into matches, still playing 1,000. And, of course, has to swerve this, Jeremy, so... That's not an easy shot. Oh, what a hit. What a tremendous hit he made there. Yeah, and he got Rail this, first. This ball this awfully sword. deep to where it's, yeah. it's touchy. Should be able to get to the good side of the eight, but can he get close to the six? Is he going to fall straight on the six? I, I feel like he doesn't even know right now. You know, yeah, yeah, that's how tough it is. Ooh, he's playing rail first. He, he's going to catch that point, isn't he? Oh, he came out nice. Wow. He probably got as good as he could besides – oh, yeah, and he's got an angle. Boy. Well, he doesn't want to shoot that one over. I'll tell you that. Great work there to get where he did. So many players have modeled their game after Shane's. He's kind of pioneered uh, a real, you know, maybe what, is it, what they call power nine ball type of a display here. I had a guy come for pool instruction, and he had a Shane Van Boning cue and Shane Van Boning chalk, and he wore a Shane Van Boning shirt. And Oh, no yeah. matter how I tried to encourage him to <laughs> refrain from anything, uh, stroke exactly, yeah. to say, you know, uh, we're, we're going to do it the Shane Van Boning method. So that's fine, too, if you'll pour in the hours. And yeah. you are, it, to be a great player, you got to pour in the hours no matter how you go about it. It's just that's right. Simple. And, you know, in golf, they talk about a lot. I watch and listen to a lot of those guys, I think. Some of the instructors there are very genius and similar to pool in a lot of ways. And you know, they talk about the greats in golf. That the greats in golf, you know, eight out of ten of them, the real upper echelon greats. I'm talking about. You know, they all like borderline make a real bad move in the swing somewhere, right? But it's just borderline. Like it turns out mm -hmm. to be a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's just very unique to them and something you might not teach to others. But there are going to be some other players that come along that, that Shane style does agree with them, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. Somebody that doesn't go through the cue ball quite as much on certain shots. Right. That you know. was one of the points. And then the other thing, flick the elbow out on the last stroke. Yeah. And, and I've noticed you know. that Shane has tamed that down here in recent times, too. I don't know if he's watched video or I don't know what's caused that, but it used to be he, right on the last stroke, his elbow would be way inside, and then he would flick it out two two inches anyway. And then just get through the ball perfectly pure, which is fine if you play 10 hours a day. Yeah, and a phenomenal guy, too. He's a yeah. one in a million kind of guy. He's pure diligence. He, he's yeah. disciplined and works hard. Yeah, but he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a little ahead of perpendicular in the back. He's got a very unique grip, almost like a tennis grip with the hand coming forward like that, almost to the hip position, I guess you could say. What a nice, nice shot <laughs> this was. What a hit from that off angle. He made it look easy. He's that the is, best at that, though, yeah. edging the ball. Yeah, great job there. Yeah. He's got to maybe kick away just a hair here with a hair of spin. Looks like about a medium speed. That'll bring the cue ball downward with the one. Hopefully, he's hoping the one either goes in or comes back up a little bit. Maybe he can utilize the six and nine. Some type of cover. Looks like he's going natural with no English, which is fine. He'd love to just overcut the one a little bit. Let it come up a little, cue ball drag down. Yeah, see, nice medium speed. Oh, it caught the point. You see how the cue ball's coming was, downward, right? And it was going to work great if it yeah. just doesn't catch that point and rim the pocket and then stay there. That's right. 
And notice he didn't kill it. That's the that's that speed that mm -hmm. percentage wise gets you to this in rail, which is all you can try and do. Yeah, it was a high quality effort for sure, and it was by design. It wasn't just it just randomly went here. I might get to the bank on the two here cross side. I don't like trying to get short side. That looks awfully dangerous. I think he's thinking he can thump in there, but maybe not. Wow. Yep, he's trying to the thump in there. He's going to be fine. He's going to get around this with a little spin. <sighs> he's wondering how he got that much on, and I think he was trying to break him out is what I think. I the, do, too. The, yeah, the way yeah. you go about it with that much speed, he's like, man, how did I get that? Oh, does the two not go? Oh, what a great camera angle. I was just looking at the table from the top. I didn't. I kind of ignored the camera, and I thought the two had the corner. And well, definitely, I think I would have played maybe for the bank cross side then. But I didn't mind his shot, though. But you notice there was a lot of speed on the cue ball. You know, he could have clipped the ball and maybe had something bad happen. He's looking at this combo. you got to be getting from that range off angle. No, it's a, it, well, it's a winning or losing shot. Is he looking to maybe edge the two and use the three as a holder on the two uh -huh. and go the end rail with the cue ball? Like, you know what I mean? I like Ma that. Maybe a behind better. the seven also. He, if he plays it, then he's, he understands he's but willing to bet the game. But he's willing to bet the game. Uh, great shot. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Good action there. Now made it, does. Made know, it smoothly. I'll ask you a good question here, Mark. Does. Is he going around the eight here? I don't think. I think he's going to take short that. side. Yeah, I think just okay. take what you. That way you don't have to fight with it. So no, hard. I like that. Just the way he was cueing it, I didn't know for sure. So he's going around the eight leads you right up to that side pocket. It sure does. Time, <laughs> you know, well, you can tell there's just a diamond of space for the side rail above the four, anyways. So you don't have a lot, but you know his shot on the two three. Obviously, he liked it. That's mm -hmm. the first thing. Oh no. <sighs> oh boy. Hit the point going by. Yeah, he's going to yeah. be disappointed. Uh, but does his opponent behind him make him want to shoot at maybe that kind of shot a little more often because the safety wasn't easy and, you know, Fetter does so many things well. And you're talking about the combination. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, but also he, like, he it went in effortlessly, so it was pretty uh, locked on. He just had to make a good hit. And not suggesting that it's simple. It wasn't dead by any means, but – he felt confident, and then you could see he clearly made it. But okay. now the four, that's such an uncharacteristic miss. I mean, it's in the way that he missed it, too, it, it went into the point. He didn't overcut it. Okay, you got to get a little steam into this one, but not too much now. You want it to release. Oh, he could hold. I thought he had to go to the rail, so get these eyes checked when I get home, Mark. Uh, I don't, you force it here. I think I come two rails to the opposite spot, the head spot here myself. Mm -hmm. Just yeah, a little above the side. Let you float rather yeah. than punch. You you want that cue ball just to go where it wants to go and just try to govern the speed. Now he'll introduce a hint of left. Yeah, right. right Take that like side that. pocket out of there. Yeah, right to the opposite spot. Is that where you said? Right on the <laughs> opposite spot. <laughs> yeah, that's where he <laughs> said. To him, that's where he said to himself, and uh, yeah. uh, he got there. Now just trailing by one rack, 5-4. Now we're going to get another chance to look at this, Jeremy, the, the shot that Shane hit. Well, it's on the rail. Okay, it was uh, much closer to the rail than I thought it was. Now you wonder how it hits the point in that regard. But I don't see how either. Yeah, It just does. <laughs> we've all had it happen to us. If he didn't shoot so straight and hit him so pure, that wouldn't happen. If he hit a little bit away from the point, like <laughs> crude strokes do.
Yeah. 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 It was just a playing card or two's width off the rail. But now Fetters had some nice breaks. He had one non-complying break. He had an unfortunate kiss, but I think he starts to get real successful on the break from here on out. 970 clip here at on his TPA. Uh -huh. Eight ball almost got down. Non-complying non break. He's probably going to oh. get to shoot again here. Shane. Uh, going <laughs> to pass this back already. And yep. there is no push out after you do not comply. Now here, he's super thin on the two. You'd love to just say, let me edge it and go back down. Easier said than done. Now the one thing is, Mark, can he hit enough of the two to get it underneath the four nines kind of somehow? Oh, you can't roll out. Oh. Uh -oh. You can't roll out. This is going to be a foul. Uh, and he's not supposed to inform him either. No, that's right. That's an issue. Yeah, Ed Ladawa was not supposed to inform the player of no rollout. At least I'm not sure what happened actually. Maybe Shane informed him, but Yeah, we've talked about the rule. You can't push out, but he can't inform him. The referee, yeah, the referee is not, is not supposed him. to. He can act now. Fetter can ask the rule all he wants, and the referee will give him the correct answer. Right. But the referee is not supposed to go out of his way to inform the rule. Now these are gentlemen, and these guys respect the heck out of each other. Shane's not going to get too alarmed over it, but well, hopefully, the, hopefully, Ed Ed is realized and. That won't happen again. And it's not it's not nice guys. It's they respect the sport. Yeah, that's professional that's, sport. Right. So I mean it's not right. about, you know, right or wrong. That's the rule. That's why the rule is very rules are there for no arguments, not to create arguments. No, I'm just saying that Shane being conciliatory here oh, is yeah. out of respect you know, because he knows that's not right for the referee to inform him that you can't push out. Right, right. That but right uh Shane taking it like a gentleman really. Right. That was my point. That's yeah, look at it's this. not just that he likes better. It's, <laughs> it's just what's in the best interest of the sport as opposed to this individual shot. Well, tremendous result. Well, you know, and Shane's on his end. Of course, there's respect and, of course, considering the situation and what's the right thing. But not a whole lot he can do, Mark, once Ed tells him. No. Right? I mean, he right. can't say, Ed, foul on you. <laughs> so... I mean, once he tells them, Fetter didn't strike the cue ball. So, I mean, there's not a whole lot he can do. It's the same thing as if, a, what if an audience member says you can't put out? Now, yeah. what are you going to do? How do you penalize a Fedor out of that? You no, know, no, so you can't. Right. You can't. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's my point is that it can happen. And that's where borderline hit calls, whether it be hit calls or other calls, you have to factor that into the plan. If you can't beat the guy because of something like that happened, because it's inevitable, much like a cell phone going off on your backswing. If you haven't planned for that, you're really not prepared. Yeah. And you're just going to have to deal with it at times. Now, there are people, you know, that, that are generally rancorous and hostile in life that would make a big issue out of this. And would, we'd still be talking about it. So. Yeah, you know, they'd already be blaming the match loss exactly. on, on, on that Exactly. They're situation. looking for an excuse. Yeah. Uh-oh, watch outside. Ooh. Of course, always talk about how tough them side pockets are on the diamond. It saved <laughs> yeah. better a bit right there. <laughs> Sometimes it helps, doesn't it? Sure. <laughs> it's like skids, you know. We yeah. always talk about when the ball's skidding us. How about the times when we miss hit it and it skids in? You yeah. know, I mean, that happens too. Yeah, and it's amazing that I think it's the eighth round. Could be even further. Surprised he's not kicking this into congestion here. I mean, he can kick easily two rails underneath this, and the cue ball kind of go over towards the six behind mm -hmm. it a little bit. Mm -hmm. The three up, so really going for it. He'll put a little more on this one. Not a whole lot, but a little bit more. 
Oh, he's lost the cue ball, unfortunate a little bit. But Solid impact, went right on through the three ball, and that happens. Yeah. And I'm just, I wonder percentage-wise, what's the right play there? I mean, I'd love to know. I'd love to learn if he's supposed to two-rail kick right there, which I think I probably would have, With, but I understand trying to make it as well. And surprising that that rollout situation hasn't come up yet for Fetter here in the eighth and ninth rounds. Mm-hmm. Got a little thinner here than he wanted. I don't see any reason to get that thin, but just because the five's so, so playable. When you say surprising the rollout situation, you're referring to a non-compliant break? And yeah, that, that, okay, that, that right, he didn't right. know the rule and it hadn't come up I just prior wanted to make matches. sure we all yeah. understood what you meant. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because, you know, he may have complied, but I'm sure he's played other matches where other players haven't complied, just like that situation there. So, Yeah, and just as he now learns it, we're going to dispense with that rule hereafter <laughs> <laughs> because it's nonsensical. Looks like he's going forward now. Kind of raised the tip at the last moment. SVB cruising on. Going to grab a six game to four game lead here with this nine ball. Take a look with those TPAs. Let's see if I can see it. 9.45, Van Boning. 9.43, Gorst. That's pretty darn good. There's our look at our National Bigger Academy rack track. Exchange racks and Van Boning 1-2, Gorst 1-2. Van Boning 2, Gorst 1, Van Boning 1. Boning pretty nimble at making the wing ball and the one ball on the side simultaneously, and that really opens up his offense. Yeah. One ball's down. Cue yeah, ball got kissed away from the two. He won't be happy about that. Nine yeah, ball got all the way down table. as well. Oh, and the only ball that went across the line was the nine. That's mm -hmm. very unusual. I, I would say that is one of the problems with the cut break is that you do get less complying breaks as opposed to like the Max Airbrilly end of the rack head ball, you know, straight on. Yeah, and break. it seems like there's a fine line on that cut, meaning you can cut them a certain, full, you know, weight on the one, right? Yeah. And they fly around the table. And if you're just a hair lighter than that, it seems yeah. like the movement really diminishes greatly. So, And it happens more on the cut break than it does on the full on break. Nice shot here using the 3-5. Don't think he completely got him there, but maybe I'm wrong because mm -hmm. we are a long ways up here. We'll be able to tell. Certainly if he can look right at the two, he's going to be looking to do something with the two. He apparently cannot see the two straight on. So type of shot is not the worst to curve at it. Because you can, you can bank it back between the six and the four. You can bank it on the wide side. Or you can <laughs> kick it in. Oh, oh, making something happen here. Three niner. <laughs> well, I don't know if he's anxious for that. It's not wow. quite like that combo he made earlier with the two and the three. This is a little bit more gap. Yeah, but them. he could play it with a kiss. He could follow through this bank in the three and follow to the side rail with a little top right. Yeah, and try and. Go rail first, making the nine. Now, if he had a little more cut on it, I think it would be perfect because you could get the three a lot, you know, pretty safe, to right. be honest with you. So right. He's got a straight back on the three offensively that, that plays. Not something you normally would shoot. But, I mean, what do you do? I don't know if – can he get to the extreme right side of the three to be able to overcut it and run the cue ball? I don't know. The four may have him. He's shooting at it, Mark. 
Maybe playing the eight simultaneously then. Maybe. Good call there. Want a little bit of luck, and he's going to give up a shot, but nothing easy coming out of the pocket with the cue ball. And then the cue ball traveling away from the four ball, which makes it less comfortable to play. Yeah, the nine, you know, is a, I wouldn't say it's in play, but he's got to get through this a little bit. Easy to hit this thick into the outer point when you're trying to get through it a little. Looks like he's powering up, too, like he's going down and back. Oh, yeah. Maybe hit center cut. And so smooth, too. Look, he barely hit that ball, and look how much travel he was able to get with a very uh, frugal length stroke. Yeah, and he just, again... No excess speed, right? So starts very calmly with the downswing and then accelerates through. So it always appears lighter because we, as spectators, witness the exterior speed. We really don't, we aren't good enough to really see the impact of the tip and what speed he's, you know, mm -hmm. created right there and through the cue ball. Just kind of like you watch Tom Brady throw the ball. You see the arm go back. You see it start downward, but you're never really good enough to watch it get released because he's created so much speed by the time he releases the ball. Yeah, he's looking at the bank, and is that all about the position on the cue ball? Because the cut in the side doesn't look very tough to me, Mark. Am I getting fooled here? Um, well, I, th I think it must be a little bit tougher because that well, it's bank not a would hanger, be the last, last choice. But, yeah, it looks to me I would much prefer cutting this personally than this bank but he on the other hand feels differently yeah i don't i mean i rarely have ever questioned this kid's decisions you know especially playing rotation last night with his one pocket i rarely questioned a decision but that one there looked it, it must have been really hairy moving the cue ball or something maybe the seven was a big ball on the way to move the cue ball but that didn't look too tough to me to cut in the side my opinion was that he wanted to cinch his position and didn't want to work like we said he always does, harder, mm -hmm. but I think he should have there. Oh, two overcuts that Shane may remember, depending on how this match plays out. Well, Shane's hitting the ball good. He's not missing on the amateur side. He's missing on the pro side, so you got to hit it good to miss on that side. Okay, funny little shot here. He'd like to go straight up and down with no English, but I think he may have to involve a little bit of outside here. Just a hair. Otherwise, you're coming right at the eight, and who knows what's going to happen if you clatter into a ball. Yeah, and the other thing, when you cut it like this, and if you overcut it a hair to the pocket, you could scratch without any. It looks like he's putting right on it. Oh, nice shot. My goodness. He's that was the inside spin. And cut it thin. And Good thing is he's just putting a little bit. Now we'll see what he wants to do. Six does go by the seven, but he's awfully stretched and it's awfully steep. Yeah, you have to fan that in. It's four cushions of position then. Seems content to go around the table here, Jeremy. Yeah, you know, he does it so well, st like we're, we've talked about all week, staying very relaxed. So he'll just use this angle. Straight high ball should take him long off the fourth rail and not have to worry about that corner pocket he's near now. Oh, he's going long three like that to the backside. Nice My shot. My goodness, what a shot that was. And what that did, Mark, by straightening out the cue ball a little bit, yeah. it made it easier to get back. If you continue around that fourth rail yeah. over there on the long side yeah. rail, you're traveling further, and it's going to just take a lot more on the cue ball. And then you have to swing a lot longer and a lot harder, and accuracy gets to be an issue. Great execution there. Good judgment, too. Yeah, hair thinner than he wanted, but still he can come go a long ways and still be comfortable on the nine.
And I don't know about years ago, but the, you know, overall years ago, but the feeling I get compared to, you know, early in my career to today also is I see a lot more of the players watching the other players' matches than they used to years ago. At least the feeling I get is, is that. You know, we always had guys that loved watching matches a long time ago after they were out of the tournament as far as the players. But I'm talking about the top players as well, the, you know, mm -hmm. upper echelon players really, you know, watching and paying attention to, to what's going on with these other guys. I think – Back There's a then, rag track real quick. Nobody really knew what was proper behavior, and oftentimes it was a great deal of ego. And it was like, if I watch you, then that's like conceding I might learn <laughs> something from you, and actually I'm way better than you type of attitude. So. Here's our TPAs with both guys hovering a little over 900, five and four and five errors respectively for Corson and Van Boning. Balls pocketed. Shane now a lead on balls pocketed by – well, a good 25 to 30 percent, maybe even more, but only a one-game difference. I think we've all matured, too, on our attitudes quite a bit. I was always a fan, but there was a lot of guys. That oh, there's that cross-side scratch possibility. Hello, two ball at the most comfortable time. Well, I don't think he complied, even two, though four, he made six, two on seven. the break. I don't see one wow. of the past. Yeah. Oh, two on the break again. Okay, we'll let that be. Looks like the three passes. <laughs> Quite a buzzing in the audience now. Nice touch there. And good decision, too, to not try to come out. This is the right place. This is this way you're never in trouble. You get out and get off angle out there, get into the nine. Then you got a problem. And we'll see if he just creeps it barely past the nine to hold a little bit of an angle. The seven somewhat over the side, but you don't want to be, like, crazy away from it shooting it. So now he's got a two-rail angle to come around the nine if he wants it. He can stun one rail above. Shane usually would go two rails behind it here, though. Beautiful shot. Yeah, and that's a little more of the stroke I saw at the International that I was liking and some tournaments prior. A little longer, mm -hmm. a little smoother through impact, a little more through the cue ball. I even commented, I think it was you and I, a couple times during his matches, it seems he's made a conscious effort to get a little more, you know, maybe not quite as hitty. Uh, I hate to say it like that. Hitty sounds like real bad. It's not bad in Shane's regard. But a little less... Less of that and a little more swing involved. All right, looks like he's going to the rail to me. Doesn't want to mess with trying to pinch it. And Shane's had a one or two game lead many times in this match. See if he can capitalize on it in this winter break format. And that's his seventh win. There's our break performance. Total break, seven for Van Boning. He's been successful on four. Course was five and one. The one successful break he had resulted in a break and run out. That's what he's got to sweat right now. Shane winning another game before he gets back to the table. Cue balls away. Oh, scratching. And it's just been one thing after another in these matches. It seems like that looks like one guy's gonna gonna maybe separate himself and 
we've seen a few little crazy incidents uh, that, mm -hmm. that has really turned matches around. Yeah, in the filler match, he was trailing 7-3, and uh, Fortunski was midway through a run out and made a couple really nice shots and then got to a relatively routine position play where the cue ball got away from him and scratched, and then I don't think he ever won another game. Yeah. I think he's just got mainly a stop your ball here. That'll be a nice heavy shot with a little angle. Oh, he's got to go forward to get that angle. Okay. Now he can just go the rail. He can go two rails back. It's up to him. If he wants to draw by the nine or if he wants to come two rails inside the nine. I think he's going two cushions. Yeah, he usually does he that. He could have stopped his ball and had what you wanted. Yeah. Or said. Well, anytime you're rolling your ball in a sense, your, yeah. your touch is so much better. Mm -hmm. That's just True that. The one thing, uh, Gorse plays for the angle. He just doesn't let the angle happen and take what he gets. So right. It's always by purpose and intent. He got a little straight there. Maybe it's just a little straighter than he wanted. And the great thing about Gorst is, and a lot, a lot of the pros these days, even more so than years ago, is he knows he's doing wonderful things he's doing more of them this week he's going to continue but if there's some way he needs to make a little bit of a change to improve he'll do it instead of saying hey i just won the tournament what do you mean and what do you mean change something yeah. if he believes it needs a little change or it needs a little work on he's going to do it mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that's just what i think may be the difference in what you commented on earlier that you know Used to be a bunch of eight nineties and eight eighties were just real good, but now we're seeing it's taken nine thirties and nine forties yeah. just to win matches. Yeah, and I so. think it goes hand in hand with the professionalism, the attitude, the respect for the sport. I think all those things come into play on the the evolution of how our sports climbing here. And always back to our top players of yesteryear would still be top players today, but they would have had to learn to play better from being driven by the excellence these guys are presenting. Yeah, and they would have with the information of today and everything else that's going on. In fact, I'm sure there's many of them that wish they had this uh, that opportunity to, to learn in a different era. <clears throat> And he, I think he tied the match once earlier, but really has gotten to this one game scenario, trailing by one game a few times. And then Shane kind of pushed it back to two games. And you see Gorse at 922 and SVB at 910. Rack 14 set to begin. Gorst breaking, trailing 6 7. Again, he hasn't got the movement on the balls like Shane has as a whole. One right. ball and the one ball's down. We're going to comply. Looks like he's going to get a shot, but he got a kiss on the three. And he's good. good. Okay. <laughs> he shakes his head. Yeah. I'm so glad to escape the wrath of the break rule. And he sh does it with a smile, like <laughs> always, this youngster. I guess I've known him five years. He came here as a very young man, but a talented player. And uh, I just love his approach. So sincere, hardworking. He's not a drama guy. No, and, you know, it's just kind of like, I don't know, when certain people enter the room, you can kind of tell they're just great at something. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like, I just get that feeling about Fetter, even though, you know, he's quiet as a mouse a lot of times, but just, you know, something about the guy. You know, it reminds me of yeah. a story that I got confirmed by many old players about Eddie Taylor and Jersey Red were on the road, and there was a pool detective 
in the room with where they were at. Red came in first, like you always do when you're on the road, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And the pool detective said to a guy, "See that guy in the red hair over there? Don't play him any one pocket." <laughs> and, uh, and of course, Eddie came in later, and the same pool detective said. See that guy over there? Don't play him anything. <laughs> period. <laughs> so that's kind of where I'm going with Fetter. Fetter gives me that feeling of just a champion. Period, and and doesn't surprise me what he's doing with uh, with other disciplines as well. Makes me happy because always when I dealt with ESPN, they're always talking about our demographics bad because we don't have any youth. You know, well here we go, 21 years old and can play with anybody. Yeah, well, they could have said that about a lot of sports not long ago, um, or or let's say more of. Um, mm -hmm. But every sport's getting younger in, in the world today. It does not matter which one. You can just pick one out. I think just a few year, years ago, the oldest start lineman in the NFL was like 30 years old, 31 years old. Everything changes a little bit. Quality breaking run out there. That's the second one of the match. Ties this 7-7. And it looked like he put more body into that break to me that time. Um, you know, desperately wanting to comply with the rules, and you mm -hmm. saw the gesture afterwards. Yeah, the acoustics of the uh, broadcast booth is pretty quiet, but you could definitely hear a little... Uh, raised sound when it impacted the one ball here. Starting to get a pretty full house in here. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of Louisville people that you know weren't here for the tournament or from not too far away that are going to make the trip in for today for the finals of the nine ball. Two ball on the wing. Oh, he shoved it in. Watch out for the cue ball. Oh, it needed some help, I think, and it got it. Oh, boy. One over the side, three over the opposite side, five right there handy. The other night we were using the speed demon, no, brake demon That's right. app, and we had a brake contest. And Fedor was in that. He says, I don't break hard. I don't break hard. And, and he doesn't, you know, in general. But then at the end, he had a chance to beat Jason Shaw, but he needed to get to 26, and he got it up to 25, which is that's a pretty good break. And just cheat the pocket of hair here. I don't think he wants to move the cue ball much. Okay, a little bit of a tricky shot here. I don't think he can hold this ball, and I don't think he really wants to anyways. I think he wants to move the ball and get nice and full on the five. You'd love a little angle, but you don't want to flirt going by the seven and get kind of silly in a silly manner, get snookered, right, Mark? So, right, right, right. Oh, he's gotten a little light here. He's going to be into the seven for sure. Yeah, now he's got a no problem. Should just knock it away, actually. I don't think he wants to play on the light side here. That way he may fall on the wrong side of the six with the seven near this, this rail here. Hmm. This is laying a little bit funny here. Yeah, very, very much it's so. Because the cue ball is going to track towards the long rail in a lot of hits, uh, depending mm -hmm. upon how the five. I think that's why I say I would go with a low – I think he's going with a low – no, he's going with a high ball. No, low, low right is what I would do and move the seven fully. Okay. Oh, I was wondering if he gets this angle. And this is what I was talking about, Mark. If you move the seven slowly to the side rail, you could fall a little funny on the six. Now, he got just good enough to go through it, I think. But say he's two inches short yeah. there. I mean, that becomes very odd quickly. Now, here's your choice. Do you want to apply a hair of left? 
If you do, you play the short side. If not, you come all the way one rail to straight high. Because Fetter knows he can take a little cut on the seven. Going left here. Yeah. Well, then he should be probably staying inside the seven. Oh, no, he came above it. Well, he came into it. Yeah. Or uh, tried to get above it. <laughs> and he got a pretty decent little bank. Should play the eight in the same side pocket or underneath from the into the corner. When they're close together like this, that seven ball does not have any time to pick up any overspin whatsoever. So it's very easy with amateurs to hit this too full or it comes in too short. short. Right. Yeah, and the other thing about that that I toyed around with a lot lately is when the object ball, you know, when it's near the rail, period, it doesn't have time to turn over, even if the cue ball's away, right? Yeah. So it's going to grip a little bit anyways, like mm -hmm. a slidey kind of ball anyways. So, you know, when you're on top of it like this, the cue ball doesn't have time to revolve to help it out a little bit. Yeah. So it can even stiffen up even more without you recognizing it. And then you're putting some of that hidden English or mm. the contact induced side spin that shortens it. So you have to overcut this. Yeah. I think with top English, you can overcut it quite a bit and still straighten it out. It looks just that way. It looks like he's aiming it to be overcut. Yeah, bit. for sure. He might be going side rail, in rail. Oh, that's two banks that have gotten away from filler. I mean, filler, excuse me, fetter. Yep, that's the problem. Getting it heavy. Yeah, and he threw the ball with right spin, which I actually thought he would go with more of an inside spin and really cut the ball more. But that's all preference a lot of times. Now, Shane, a lot of times right here, he, he elevates and he kind of pops this to the in rail. Can't be going with inside here, can he? Big shot. Yeah, just outside English. <laughs> he wanted to make sure he got that down. And that was the right play straight in on the eight now. So yeah, a great lot of shot. You know, amateur fans would say that's an easy shot. It is not being a little <laughs> flat having to check the ball from off the rail. And that's why he went with that slight elevation, probably three they or help four the degrees. Check, right. right. Yeah. So he kind of stunned it. That was that half an eight iron type of yeah. thing. There. And that puts him on the hill. Yeah, and I don't recall Fetter ever getting the lead in this match at all. He may have had the lead early at two to one. I guess I should have taken a screenshot of our rack track. That would have helped. 9-14 to 9-12. Yeah, and it was just a, a couple little situations that cost them some points on their TPA. Both have played great. Shane wants to stay with that pretty full cut here. Doesn't want too much. Uh, hate to go down with a non-complying break. Oh, that's it right there. That's for sure. He's made two. He's complied. He's going to have a long shot on the two ball. And one of his favorite shots to practice, if he's got the angle, I think he does, straight top, getting to the side rail, in rail, and then back up to the center of the table. A shot he'll sit there for hours and shoot. Uh, he usually puts the cue ball a little closer well, to the rail. Well, he's drawing. Okay, so that means he's straighter than I thought. This will be a pretty shot right here if he connects. Ooh, yeah, get back up. Yeah, I can see he stopped midway. Don't shoot there. Time to check that out. Yeah, and he's even looking at what yeah. his other options are just because it looks like to me he's going towards the side rail here with the angle mark. Yep. And that makes the draw play very difficult in my opinion. No question about it. This might be one of these where you, if you hit the pocket properly, you can draw it straight back. But if you hit the heart of the pocket, it might go towards that corner pocket. Yeah, I wonder if he's smoothing it and just trying. Oh, oh wow. pretty shot. Well, pretty he's, shot. he's smoothed <laughs> it with a lot of power, I'll tell you that. And you can see it go a hair towards the rail and then grab with that English and straighten out. What a shot there by SVB. <laughs> big time shot. Big time moment. you got to practice that yeah. big swing to be accurate. Yeah, they could hear that two ball hit in the pocket from the blackjack tables. I'll tell you that. That was hit sweet. 
Looks like he can cheat this and get to the good side of the five with a little draw stroke. A little straight. A little off. A little yeah. bit straight. Now the SVB of old would just high top spin. Yeah, high ball yeah. this. <laughs> I, I don't blame him if he does top spin. I like yeah. that shot. He's close. He loves it. He practices this shot all the time. And again, the tempo in it has gotten better to me. Normally, not normally, but sometimes he used to hit that with a little more warp to try and create even more angle mm -hmm. instead of just creeping it out there which I like this a lot better. Very easy to repeat. It's All always, right. always class to end the match with a break and run out. And that's just what this will be, his third break and run out of the set. SVB. Better of course. Extremely well played match by both players. Yeah, you can remember defeating Federer Gorse in 2022 Derby City Classic, and it hadn't happened much, Mark. So, <laughs> no, I mean, no. that's a feather in your cap for any player. This was another great edition of Elite Class Pool. Thank you for joining us. That's our time for this time. Until next time, so long.